minutes for questions and then if people want to we could break up into workshops because it's nice to also know that. I'm sure many of you can keep contribute amazing ideas and creative ideas and shouldn't all be just from the front so I can open it now for any questions or contributions from the floor if you want to speak if you could come to the front I've got two names put hands up so far so that people can speak not too long um, so if you come if you come to the front one oh uh, yeah and I can see any women do come to the front so that we don't waste time for people coming down. And we don't have a roaming mic, I'm afraid. Just get me a look. First come first. Just come in and help. Can I speak yeah. through the mic? Yeah, through the mic. Easier. Hi, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. I'll just start speaking. My name's Daniel Bloomfield. I'm, I have a Jewish name, but I'm not Jewish. I'm Jamaican. <laughs> I'm Jamaican. And uh, I want to ask a question about, about um, the vision of the panelists. So I, I just want to give a, a bit of context to my question, which is that, um, that, that I learned a lot about this conflict by living in the UK over the last many years and formed an opinion about things. And so on Facebook recently, I have been posting my own opinion and, and forwarding stuff. And I've had my share of your anti-Semitic and um, like derogatory comments thrown at me, which I which I try to, uh, to deal with responsibly. And it's got me very interested in the conversation that actually makes a difference. Because I'm really clear that my posts don't, off, they often do not make a difference. But I'm really clear that my perspective doesn't. And um, you know, I'm, I'm really settled on that there's a, there's a distinct difference between a conversation where you, you explain what's going on and describe what's going on, which I tend to do, and a conversation where you, where you sort of just a vision. Uh, I'll give a really quick example of what I mean, which is that you know you could um, you could say that that our government take an interest in certain areas and not other areas. You could say that's absolutely true, and you could say it about me as well. People could say that I have an interest in um, in Israel Palestine, and I don't have an interest in in Africa and people starving over there or people with you know dying of infectious disease throughout the world. A huge number of people of poverty. It's true. And you could point point your finger at me and say that. And it's true. And it, it takes an extraordinary person that you point a finger at them and say, this is what's going on. And they actually make something useful of that. You know, and I think the conversation that's going to make a difference, and I want to ask you guys, it's it's the sharing of a vision, like I have a dream, like Martin Luther King shared. And you really can move people to tears when you say when you speak your dream. And I just want to know what is the what is the dream of the of the, the people who spoke today? What is your dream for the region that will actually have people get, okay, I'm this kind of person, I'm this, you know, I'm a person who only looks here and looks there. And, yeah, right, you got it right. But what are you actually asking me to do? You know, what's your dream? Thank you. Hi, good evening everyone. Uh, my name is Mizan. Um, what I want to say is, um, first of all, thank you very much to Vicky uh, for, uh, for coming along. Um, I think what we need to do is um, exercise our democratic right to vote. And I think what, uh, what, what we should be doing is being tr strategic. <coughs> and what we need is a list of politicians that are in favour of um, supporting Palestine. And we need to have this publicised so that we can vote for them in the next election, and those uh, who are supporting Israel, um, we can write to them and uh, uh, take action in that way. The, the other thing that I want to mention, and I think Leila um, um, uh, touched on it, was the whole thing about anti-Semitism. And I think the biggest challenge the Palestinians have faced, or this struggle, um, has been uh, being branded um, anti-Semitic. But let me ask you, are Arabs Semitic? Yes. Are Palestinians Semitic? Yes. That's the angle we need to take. We need to fight them with the rubbish language that they use, and we need to challenge them. And I think what we need to do is be more strategic about how we deliver um, our responses. And it does mean, unfortunately, going to um, uh, conflict in terms of terminology and silly things like that to make our point. And I think the people that do classify 
people that support Palestinian uh, Palestine as anti-Semitic, we should class them as being discriminative against um, Arabs because they're not including Arabs as Semites. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, uh, my name is Patricia. I've been following uh, what's been going on in Palestine for most of my adult life, uh, mostly through individual actions. And I'm really pleased to, um, to know that Lusham is planning on coming together and build a movement for uh, the rights of the Palestinian people. I just wanted to find out in a more practical um, sense, there's, there are multiple uh, groups here represented today. So I would like to um, get a steer from you what you plan uh, what, what do you think this movement will be? Will be representative of all the movements that are here today? Will be a new movement? What 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 will be the scope of its uh, fight or struggle uh, on behalf of the Palestinians and for Palestinians? Uh, and what action will be taking um, will be taking place? And all sort of practical things around the movement that you seem to be willing to put forward. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. Can you hear me? Yes. Thanks. Yeah, the other mic. You see yeah, the, the mic. other one mic. There. Well, that one there, sorry. Standing How up. many middle ones is that's there? That one. <laughs> that one or that one? That one. That's not the middle one, is it? Okay. <laughs> uh, look, I'm, I'm in a compromised situation. My notes are not sequential in, in, in logical order. You have to bear with me. But the background to our lives, as far as I can see, and I think you'll agree, is that we're living in the age of the unthinkable, of uh, things that are absolutely crazy. The Jewish people, uh, whatever's happened to them, they've gone haywire. These are not the Jewish people that we knew and grew up with. What's happened anyway? I can't answer that, but they're not the same people and that we uh, know to be Jewish people. Um, I think that our friend may relate to that. I've touched on it before. Um, I'm. Uh, I, I don't want to be, well, make, make of me what you will. Uh, I, I do believe in moral ethics. And um, it stood us properly good before, but now there is no moral ethics except what makes money. That is your new uh, moral. Mor moral. Uh, included in that is the, the bloody arms trade. They, they come and go like uh, uh, phantoms. Uh, Michael Mates, who was the minister, was an arms trailer, trader, and they account for, they destabilised the surface of the world. And it's done selectively, unofficially, with the, uh, as licensed with the government, which is directed. And you can't just set up an action and uh, buy it. It's got to be through licence and condonance. Anyway, I'm, I'll just get on quick. But, uh, my notes, I'm afraid, are uh, not properly... Uh, I, I, I've only got this to scribble on. Um, when you consider that the modern Israelis... Um, are the uh, children of the Holocaust survivors who we all uh, loved and respected for surviving and uh, they made a point, anyway, uh, uncom uncompromising about survival and they're the greatest survival people at all. But uh, in, this, in the grand uh, uh, case of it all, they're now following Mr Hitler's example um, about uh, uh, brutality. Uh, uh, also, uh, the uh, Egyptian general, he's a, a nutcase, but he's, apparently he has shut off the exit to uh, his, sorry, Egypt along his border uh, for the refugees uh, fleeing death. So it gets ridiculous. Um, he's closed the, the borders, and he's a, he's a fellow uh, a Muslim. Right, well, uh, I'm nearly over. Uh, I want to stop already. Yeah. Oh, all right. Thank you, Charles. I'll give you the punchline another time. Hi, everyone. Um, so there was a, a couple of points I wanted to make and a couple of plugs as well. Uh, first, just to come back on the, the brother who spoke before me about the term anti-Semitism. Um, like, I think... The, the term anti-Semitism came from, uh, basically, it was what, pe what people who hated Jews described themselves as. Like, they described their view, they were anti-Semitic. Like, the pedantic point, I think, 
strict anti-Semitism of all of its historical context. Mm. Like, I think you can say, oh, it, it's not anti-Semitism, it, it's Jew hatred. But I think actually that kind of just, it, in a sense, tries to, you know, it, you're not getting at the heart of the issue of either the oppression of the Palestinians or the oppression of Jews. So I think essentially like anti-Semitism has a real historical root that, you know, might not be pedantically correct, but is that's what that term is and that's what it means. So I think confronting it looks like you're trying to skirt the issue. Um, the other thing I, uh, um, but yeah, of course, there's it's always up for discussion. That's just my perspective. The other thing is, I mean, one of the ways I think that the issue of the oppression of the Palestinians is minimised is by people framing it as a war, you know, like a war of two equal sides. I think we've got to be absolutely categorical that Gaza doesn't have a military, that Palestine doesn't have a military. It's a country under occupation, which has a right to defend itself in the same way that the countries of Europe under occupation throughout the ages have them I'm sure probably will do in the future any country that's under occupation has the right to resist uh, and on the same note we have to be absolutely categorical about supporting uh, the Palestinians right to defend themselves by any means necessary the way this more favorable ceasefire has come about basically I mean it's part of the the movement and the the mood internationally shifting against Israel but it's not because of the number of letters that, he, that MPs received. It's because of the, the, the blood that Palestinians gave fighting and defending their land. Like the Palestinians have shifted the Israelis militarily. And I think we have to, we have to support and applaud that. Because I think that ho hopefully in the same situation, we do exactly the same. Defend ourselves and our, like our families. Um, so a couple of... A couple of plugs. I'd encourage everyone to get involved with uh, London Palestine Action. They've been doing some great direct action um, and seem to be very much on the forefront uh, of the movement at the moment. The other thing is um, uh, I've got some quite nice stickers uh, basically calling out Netanyahu as a war criminal and also um, uh, just sort of generally uh, Free Palestine like uh, highlighting their hashtag and directing people to information about boycott, divestment and sanctions. So, yeah, thank you very much. Hi, my name's Lewis. Um, I'm a member of South London SWP. And I think that despite the horrors and the atrocities and the carnage that we've seen in Gaza, I think it's important that we recognise one thing, and that's that actually Israel has failed in what it's set out to do. Because if we, if we go back a month, five weeks ago, and it was quite clear back then that the Israeli objective was to smash Hamas, to crush resistance in Palestine. And clearly, you know, with the ceasefire today, it has failed to do that. And I think that's down to two reasons, really. Not only is it down to the heroic resistance we've seen from the Palestinians themselves in Gaza under conditions that we can't imagine, but also it's down to the movement of re that has really drawn in millions of people across the world. You know, those of us who have marched, who have set up campaign stalls, who have boycotted, and so on. And I think it's important that we point out that this movement is a, is a real contradiction and is opposed to what our rulers and what the people of, at the top of society say. Because if you compare the slogans of our movement, the slogans of peace, of justice, of an end to US imperialism with what Obama and Cameron do, when not only do they say that Israel is justified for doing what it's doing, but they actually provide the means and the weaponry and so on for them to do it, then we see that there's a real contradiction. So I think that our role is to strengthen that contradiction and to make it into a tension that is so strong that is in the, so that in the future, we make it impossible for our own governments to back Israeli war crimes. So I think that now is the time for BDS to push outwards and for us to make it grow as much as we can. I mean, Andy's talked about uh, the way in which trade unions have a huge role to play. I think that any trade unionists should go back to their branch or their union conference and push for a BDS motion to be passed to raise the issue. The chair mentioned the historic vote in the NUS. 
Again, I'd encourage any students to go back to their university campuses, to their students' unions, to demand boycotts of Israeli goods, to set up Palestinian societies, and so on. Because I think that Israeli terror really relies on the backing and the complicity, complicity of our Western leaders, and it's our role, really, to challenge it here where we can. I stacked a few of these posters here. My name's Bruce, and um, I live too much on my own. I don't often speak. I'm not used to doing this. I've never spoken like this before. Um, I've never, never spoken like this before in my life. But um, I did a little campaign because I got upset. I saw um, some about uh, six weeks ago two Palestinian teenagers being shot on the CCTV uh, on this Russia Today TV, and later on the Three Israelis got, um, got kidnapped and murdered, and this whole string is there. Hamas is accused of doing this, and this is how it. I've been, I put these posters up, and, and the, the Jewish people celebrate. Have a, they gather together, clever, gather together, and I think it's in um, before it was in Trafalgar Square. Um, the last time they started with uh, this. This business, but now that I think they gathered together in Kensington, celebrating their bombing of Gaza and Palestinians. So I get, I um, I lived in Finchley originally. I live, I now live in South East London, and um, there's always this entity, the Jewish entity, and that's all I knew about Jewish people. I met a few Polish people. I am born in 1948, and so everybody seems to take Israel for granted. It seems. And my contention is um, to, to look and just cancel Israel because it is a, it's, it's a dichotomy. When you set up a, a dichotomy, the, I'm looking at things from an organic point of view, when you set up a dichotomy, you will get a tension growing in, in a two, between t uh, two people on each side of the wall and that spreads to another part like Iraq and ISIS. They want to... They want a theocracy as well. You know, the Islamic people want a theocracy. Now these people have been killed there. And this whole dichotomy is spreading violence and death. And, um, and but I started putting these posters up in Colder's Green. And this is the, one of them. And if you look at the Evening Standard, they took this... Um, they took a photograph. He's ripped down. What does it say? You read that you for read people. We can't see it. There was a big mistake in 48, creation of a dichotomy in Palestine, cancel Israel. Well, you see, that was one of them, and I, I spent about three or four visits there, and I didn't know quite the excitement that uh, it was causing. <laughs> <laughs> and um, uh, so the, um, the, uh, the fact the fourth or fifth time I arrived at the station, just thought I'd do the same thing again, and... Um, well, there's a whole group of people come. I saw somebody with a camera looking at me coming out of the station. I thought, that's because I've done it so many times before. Anyway, this Speaking is another one. Mike. <laughs> anyway. Okay, shall we just read that? And then, uh, the state of Israel is a pious disease. Stop Zionist terrorism, cancel Israel. <coughs> Revert Israel to diaspora. Stop the 65 years of folly. And um, I, I, Gaza, I equated Gaza to Auschwitz. Uh, big mistake. Create some dichotomy in in, uh, in Palestine. And um, the person, the Jewish pho photographer, took a photograph of this. She works for the Jewish Chronicle, and um, she reported the the words the creation of a creation of a dichotomy in Palestine. But in the Jewish Chronicle. She spelt Palestine wrong. She spelt it Israel. Uh. Yeah. Um, but um, anyway, um, I got put in jail for 24 hours, you know, and um, I just. I, <laughs> what? Uh, for what? For put, okay, they they were they Jewish people had the they had they these posters were going up in the evening about 11 o'clock, and there was people arranging to take them down at four o'clock in the morning. I didn't know this at seven until I was put in, taken apart and put in jail. Four o'clock in the morning, there's people taking these down. And this is the Jewish Jewish lobby is quite organised. 
sign of it. It seems to me. Yeah. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> One more, one more no, contribution no. from the floor, and then I'd like, oh, Nada. No, two more. Good, two more. We've got we've, Obi first, and then Nada. Nada is a Palestinian. And then we can have speakers. Can I? Sure. Uh, you can actually use it. Hi, sorry. I'm, uh, my name's Obi. I'm from uh, Occupy London. Uh, it's, it's actually, okay, the last uh, demo, I think it was in uh, Hyde Park, they were saying that there was uh, 120,000 people participated. It was more like a picnic, really. It was. Um, some of our people pointed out that this is about, about 20. Oh, is she okay? Sorry. Yeah, that's, that's a bit steep. Yeah, they need to actually put something in the barrier there. Anyway, sorry. Um, there's about. Uh, yeah, you may have actually seen those uh, people from the uh, Palestinian Solidarity taking over uh, an arms uh, uh, factory in, I think it's Elvis. Elvis, in Birmingham. Yeah, in Birmingham, yeah, that, that's quite good, but nine people did that. 120,000 people in um, Hyde Park should, I mean, we, they could have actually recruited a few more, I think. There's about 20 um, arms uh, companies in London alone that, okay, could use about 1,000 people on the doorstep every day, would be great. But if... Um, or if you, you could join us, uh, we're doing an Occupy Democracy, Occupy Parliament Square on the 17th of October, the day before the TUC march. Uh, we will be there to actually um, uh, challenge the in injunction against uh, tents. Uh, yeah. Originally, it was actually Brian Hall, who actually stayed there for a few years, died of cancer, uh, against the Iraq war. And since then, they brought in this uh, injunction against uh, tents and sleeping materials. We would actually prefer to... Um, uh, challenge that. So we're doing that the day before the TEC march. Uh, <clears throat> but uh, there are a lot of other things that we can do. I mean, there are there are people actually saying that um, we don't have anything to do with all this conflict in um, Israel and Palestine, but then they don't seem to realize that um, the UK actually has the biggest terrorist event every two years, the DSEI. Uh, this is where that all the weapons would actually, you know, that all the arms traders in the world actually come and actually show the words to, uh, to every everybody. And the next one is actually 2015. So please watch out for that. Thank you. I will be quick, otherwise I can stay here for three, four hours. So again, I've got a lot to say. Well, I'm Palestinian myself, but who has been living here for a while. And there are many UT members, and I'm pleased to see quite a few NUT. Yeah, especially from Greenwich. <laughs> well done, NUT Greenwich, because we did a lot before on the NUT. Um, I'm going to answer a few, two things quickly, but before then, uh, I was taking a little bit, in, not, not serious notes, but uh, and I wanted to show that um, speakers or whoever speaks, uh, you do speak about Israel a lot, the Israelis. The words came a lot. However, occupation did not come about a lot. The word Palestinian, maybe I just heard them four times in here. I know why I did that. Why I did it, in fact. Because I noticed these days, uh, we don't want to end up as well when we listen to the news, we listen to the Israelis. They do work on their speeches. They do count that within five minutes they have to say the word Hamas 35 times. Yeah? It's all worked out. That's why you hear Hamas. You never hear the word Palestinians. You will never hear the word Arabs. Unless maybe they might refer to the Arab, uh, to the Druze Arabs or the Arabs inside Israel because they don't want to call them Palestinians, which I'm worried to be one of them. So I would like people here, whenever you speak, whenever you address, especially nowadays where suddenly I felt the issue of, the issue of Palestine was a bit dormant these years, which is not surprising since 1948. Usually every few years we have massacres here and there, and suddenly we hear about us. However, in Britain there has been a serious movement, I would say since, the, since 2000, especially by the unions and PSC and other organizations. So Palestine is heard of. Well, of course, usually when there is massacres and very big uh, 
uh, events and big, I mean, the, the, the whole list I can mention, massacres and massacres. Now the biggest one, one of the biggest, because everybody, every time it becomes even more complicated, more sophisticated. So now it's Gaza. So one thing I would say to everyone, please make sure whenever you speak to others, whenever you speak to people, always mention the word, the word Palestinians. Because even this word will not, we're not to have it. We're not to be told we're Palestinians. Please mention it all the time. Even if you meet people, just a few times, say Palestinians. The Palestinians said that. Or the Palestinians did this. Not, not just Hamas. Okay? Because they want us. They want you and want us to only use the word Hamas. Hamas is not, only, is not the only organization now struggling there. I hear in Arabic speeches from all the others, the Popular Front and many of the others. But why only Hamas gets the time to be interviewed, or to be, to be spoken, to be heard? So it's all worked out. There is one thing, whatever you do, the word Palestinians has to be said a lot. Same the, use the same tactics as the Israelis do. Second, the occupation. Palestine is occupied. There is occupation, free from occupation. Is the word occupation as well for people don't realize it. Yes, it's nice, the holy land and the sea and whatever. But there is serious occupation. Since 1948 is not to be undermined. So whatever you do, a lot concentrate on this. For us, it's brilliant. Because the world, we want the world to keep knowing. We are occupied, seriously occupied. Yes, there is conventions and UN and all this. And year after year, conventions, number four, number five, whatever. Numbers and numbers today, I was looking at them, so I'm not going to bring all these papers. Come on, it's too many. There is all that, but all they talk about occupation, the letters remind, we are occupied. And that's why when we talk about peace, it's not peace for Gaza only. We will know what's going to be. Maybe when we say lift the siege, they're not talking anything else than other than the siege with Rafah. If you read the news clearly, you will see. And it's the only door or gate, whatever, which is between Palestine, between Gaza, which we say Palestine, and Egypt. They're not talking about the other gates. No one said it. So there is a mistake to say, yes, we reached solution. No, we did not. We reached the opening of one little door, which could have been opened anyway, if the Egypt, if the Egyptian government, which is supported by this, the military and the US, left it a bit open about the port, I personally would see this is very serious. We're going to be faced with more and more assaults on Gaza because I can't see the port going to happen soon, especially now, especially not within 30 miles, 30 to 50 miles, they've got the gas, uh, what you call extractions, which are going to be even more serious. And the basin of all this act back all this basin of all these gas and petrol is one of the most important for the future in the Middle East, you need to know, because the Saudi Arabian one is going to finish in 20 years' time. So if we have so many wars now, there is this, this basin, which is a huge basin, and it comes under all the area of Palestine and Lebanon, and my worry as well, as I have been born in Lebanon and lived in Lebanon, is Lebanon to going to be attacked? So whenever the later the oil explorations will continue and all this, there's no one to dispute the Israelis in terms of uh, who would profit from it. So we're going to be faced with serious more if we don't keep acting, keep reacting. The unions definitely is a great, great job they're doing and keep whatever we do at all levels. There are a list of things which PSC with discussion with the Palestinians, always put forward, including PTS, and you could be free Palestine, and, and peace. So it's always along that line, but please never forget to mention occupation and Palestinian peace. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, yes, and they've, they have given the oil rights in the Golden Heights to Dick Cheney's company. You might have heard about that one too. Ali so Britain. here in, in the England with the ISIS, I'm being a bit jaded, but you know, the oil fields were taken over the Mosul. So you follow the oil, you'll find the humanitarian causes are always behind it. We are collecting some money for medical medical aid for Palestine, so if you have any coins to put it in, I hope I any of the speakers would like to come back. 
You are apologize. I'm not going to force any of you to come back if you don't want to. So this is appropriate. Do you want to finish off, John? No. There were a few off. questions. No? There were a few questions. There were a few questions. questions. There were a few questions if you want to respond to them. I mean, it's obviously not possible to answer everyone's questions in uh, detail, but, um, and I think the question right at the beginning about what is the vision, I think, is a really important one. Um, and in, even more important is the vision that uh, Palestinians uh, have for, for, uh, for, their, for their future, and us learning as much as we can about that and then supporting them in, uh, in achieving it. I have my own opinion, but it's just an opinion. Um, and I think uh, other people mentioned things like twinning and keeping those contacts up with Palestinians um, so that we get their vision. It's not what I think is a good idea. It's what people uh, there think is a, a, a good idea. I think the point about Palestinians um, uh, also being Semites is quite important. I, I agree with the, the, the person, the, the gentleman who said it has come to mean uh, Jew, hatred of Jews. But the reality is it's another form of expropriation um, and, and sort of dismissing uh, that, that, that aspect. Um, I, um, I also would like to say uh, to Nara, thank you for the points, but I also would like to remind people that we don't, they don't talk about Hamas, the Israelis, they always talk about Hamas. <laughs> I don't quite understand what is the difficulty with pronouncing a ha, huh, but it's always Hamas. Um, so, um, they ain't terrorists. Uh, and, and terrorists. Um, there are a lot of questions. I, I, in, in re relation to the gentleman, I admire your courage for speaking for the first time ever and, and feeling passionately. But I do think this is a mistake that people make to take the signs to, to Jewish areas. And I think it's the point that um, I think John made and certainly I was asked to address in my talk. Is it's not the fault of uh, Jewish people. Sadly, and I didn't go into great details, the majority of established uh, Jews who identify with the establishment do support the uh, appalling things that are going on, or they, they prefer not to know the details, and they believe the lies. And, and I think it's important that people genuinely do believe that they are, there is an existential, existential threat. And I think the important thing is, where do we direct those things? And um, uh, um, Nada made the point, and uh, Amina made the point, it's our government, other people as well. It's where the arms trade is going. That is the key thing. Crucial as it is to be boycotting in our supermarkets, it pales into insignificance compared to both the, uh, the, uh, the value of arms sales in terms of uh, profiteering and, of course, the impact of, uh, of arms, some of which we, we have seen. Um, there is much more to say. I really hope people get involved. We'll have many more opportunities for education and debate locally I think your point about important conversations and listening, really listening to what each other are saying and addressing it, rather than coming out with the line. If there was the line that worked, somebody would have implemented it by now. Uh, just to uh, respond to um, some of the points in here. I may, I think the gentleman raised the issue about, um, you know, what is the uh, vision. Well, I think the vision is, is, is clear from, from, I think we've all got, I think that's quite unified in the sense that we want to see an end to the occupation. Um, and, and, and that's the vision. And, you know, I think every, you, you said about writing posts on, on think it social media, and you don't know if people, whether it's had any effect or not. But... You know, I think everyone needs to, to, to play their part in disseminating this information, uh, however little or, or much uh, that they can. And, and you know, in terms of the results, you know, we, you and I may not see or bear the fruits of that, but, but eventually uh, we've got to believe that it will end. You know, yeah. the Palestinian people that I've met, both in, in Gaza and in the West, occupied West Bank, have, have always been pretty clear that they see that you know, for certainty that the tables will turn some point in time so you know there's no reason why we we, we should despair and, and, and think otherwise and you know with all struggles you know whether it was uh, the time of slavery or, or, or the civil rights movement in America you know there were people perhaps at the start of the, the campaign and the movement that didn't see it reach its reach its end and you could you could argue with, with the civil rights movements particularly what happened in Ferguson recently that hasn't still ended but um, you know the point being that you know 
you, you won't necessarily, you may not see the results, but I think you, you, you've you got to know that it is, um, you know, feeding into to, to, to a narrative and hopefully uh, we'll, we'll bear results at some point in time. Um, just on the issue about, I think, terminology, and, and I think Nadia mentioned about uh, Hamas, and or is it Hummus, Hamas, Hamas, I mean, <laughs> that's the question, really. Um, I, look, I think with the issue of Hamas, and it's, 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 a, it's quite an important one, is that you know many times you'll find that those of us that speak uh, out against the injustices that take place against the Palestinians, that, that we shut down, you know, they'll say, oh, that means you support Hamas, you support Hamas, and, and many times, you know, people almost get on the defensive, and, and that sort of shuts them down because they think to say otherwise that they're associated with, with, with a you know, with terrorists. And I think we need to be we need to be quite um, bold in challenging this and, and, and turning the, the tables on this argument. And you know, it's it's clear from the Geneva Convention, you know, that people have a, a, a right to resist. Uh, you know, whether, whether their name is Hamas, mm. Hamas or Hummus, it doesn't really matter. That's not the, that's not the point. The point is that people uh, have, a, have a right to uh, d defend themselves. And I think the issue of, of, of ISIS, which is obviously very topical at the moment, has caused uh, Israel, uh, has posed a, a problem for Israel in, in some respects, you know, di a different problem than any other country. And that's because it's shown more than anything how reasonable and how normal Hamas is in comparison to, to real groups that, that they would like to associate with extreme and, and, and terrorism. Thank you. Let's just make a couple of, uh, of brief points. I mean, I agree with the point that was made about the use of the term Semitic, but I wouldn't say that this is the kind of first argument you want to you want to get to, because I do agree with the person that said that you know that meaning has now been for most people changed, and language does change over time. I mean, beyond the pale, the phrase beyond the pale, um, it was first used in Ireland for Catholics that were you know it was a derogatory term for Catholics living beyond the area controlled. Um, by the by the British. Now nobody thinks that when you say beyond the pale now, you're making an anti-Catholic remark because whatever its point of origin, its meaning has changed. Now there's still a contestation around the term uh, Semitic, but it's not the argument I would use first. It's an argument that can come out in the course of discussion because otherwise you you confuse people over what are second order um, uh, order order questions, and that's an important thing when you're campaigning. It's a very important thing to get the first order questions at the front and the main enemies at the front. And this is why um, I think we've got to be absolutely clear that what we are opposed to is nothing to do with Jewish people per se. It's a political program called Zionism. And you don't have to be a, a Jew to be a Zionist. In fact, the most powerful Zionists in the world aren't Jews. <laughs> As a matter, apart from the ones that actually run the Israeli state, the most powerful Zionist in this country, until recently at any rate, was probably Michael Gove. And the most powerful Zionists in this country are the Zionists who are in the Tory party, who run the government, who make sure they get that Israel gets the arms and the support. So if I'm going after the Zionists, the biggest, most powerful Zionists to go after are the Zionists who run the government in this country, because they're the ones that are sustaining the state of Israel. I care less. In fact, I think it's a distraction to go after some rabbi in Stanford Hill. I think that's a mistake. It's a mistake because it will confuse people, and I think it's a mistake to equate Gaza with Auschwitz. I think that's a mistake because you get into a wrong debate. You get into a, a, a kind of, is the situation of the Palestinians worse than the Holocaust? Is that really where you want to start this argument? I don't want to start the argument there. I want to start the argument with the fact that the Israeli state exists because it takes Palestinian land, it exists because it's supported by the major powers, and I want to get after the major powers that are allowing it to exist for decade after decade and conduct war after war against the Palestinians. That's the first order of things. That's the main enemies. Those are the arguments to concentrate on, and they're arguments which are winning in this country, which people now accept in a way that they've never accepted them in the entire history of the Israeli state. So don't do the things that distract from that, do the things that are already working and get after the people who are really at the heart of this uh, of this system. And that's our government and the American government. And they will be here. This is the, the closest you or I or anybody else is liable to get to President Obama when he appears in Wales next weekend. 
They're the people who drive this system. They're the people who are driving the wars. Let's get after them. Thank you so much for, um, for having the patience and staying here. If you want to continue the discussion, do so. We can still be here for technically just before 10 o'clock. So you can continue with discussions here if you want to, or you can go in the lobby. If people want to talk about being active, in one, one, if they want to go to the NATO demo, maybe they could come in, um, set, come to this area. And if they want to talk about the direct actions that we're doing, and Matt, we are okay. doing direct Thank actions, we're not just... Uh,